All right, everybody, welcome to Math with Grace. Today we're going to be going over some linear programming review. The first problem we're going to be working on is from Unit 3, Lesson 7, page 26. And it looks just like this, basic stuff, okay? They're giving us our constraints where x is greater than or equal to 0, y is greater than or equal to 0, x plus y is greater than or equal to 3, x plus 2y is less than or equal to 10, and x plus 6, or x is less than or equal to 6. So for these three equations, I'm going to label them number 1, number 2, and number 3. And then I'm going to get started in solving whatever needs to be solved. So for equation number 1, I have x plus y is greater than or equal to 3. I'm going to solve for y. Subtracting an x from both sides, I get that y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 3. Okay. I'm going to go then to number 2. x plus 2y is less than or equal to 10. Again, solving for y, I'm going to subtract this x from both sides. 2y is less than or equal to negative x plus 10. Then I'm going to divide every term by 2 so that y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x. I'm pulling this fraction outside of the variable, okay, plus 5. Now, I don't really need to work through number 3 because it's already in perfectly graphable form. So now I'm going to head, go ahead and graph these. Grabbing a piece of graph paper, I'm going to go ahead and form up a graph here. Remember, I don't need it to be any of the negative quadrants because uh, these first two constraints tell me that x has to be greater than 0, so everything above the x-axis and this one says y has to be greater than 0, so everything to the right of the x of the y axis tells me I only need the first quadrant. So now I'm going to go ahead and graph my lines, starting with line number 1. I'm going to start at a positive 3 and put my first dot. That's my starting point. And my slope is a negative x. A negative slope tells me I'm going to be walking downhill. So I'm going to go down 1 over 1, right? Because the coefficient of x is a 1. 1 over 1 is my rise over run. So down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. I'm going to grab my little ruler here, and it is y is greater than or equal to, so that tells me I'm going to have a solid line, and it's going to be greater than, which tells me I'm shading above my line, okay? And I'm going to label it line number one. Now, for line number two, I'm starting at a positive five. So one, two, three, four, five. This slope is as, as well a negative slope, but our, our slope is a one over two this time. So I'm going to go down one over two, down one over two. Okay, and I'm going to draw this line. It is a solid line as well because y is less than or equal to, so I'm going to be shading underneath. This is line number two. So, so far, this right here is the feasible region. Okay, but I've got one more line to plot, right? Is this x equal? It is less than or equal to 6. The way we graph that is we count to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on our x-axis, and then it's just a vertical line. Remember, when we have x equal to a constant, it's just a vertical line. And so it's going to look like that. This is line number 3, and we are shading this way because x is less than or equal to. So now that shows me my feasible region is this area here, okay? That is my feasible region. So now I need to find my corner points. Well, this is one corner point, right? And that was x is 0, y was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So 0, 5. This is another corner point, 
and that is at 0, 3. We have a corner point here, right? And this is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2. So 6, 2. We have a corner point here at 6, 0. And we have a corner point here as well, which is at 1, 2, 3, 0. Right? Those are all of our corner points. Corner points, remember, are where the lines intersect. Okay? Here I've got an intersection. Remember, the x-axis is a part of our line as well for right here. So wherever I intersect the x-axis, same with the y-axis, because that's what this one gives us. Okay? So those two intersections, these are all our corner points. We've got five of them. So now I like to list my corner points. So 0, 5, 0, 3, 6, 2, 6, 0, and 3, 0. And now we'll find our P equals. I like to call it the operative function because that's what it actually is. So I label it OF. And now, so our original operative function is 15x plus 4y. So now we just substitute in our x, y value for what they've given us here. So I have 15 times 0 plus 4 times 5. Well, 15 times 0 is 0. 4 times 5 is 20. For this one, I have 15 times 0 plus 4 times 3. Well, 15 times 0 again is 0. 4 times 3 is 12. For the next one, I have an operative function of 15 times 6 plus 4 times 2. Well, 15 times 6 is 90. 4 times 2 is 8, so 98. My operative function is going to be 15 times 6 plus 4 times 0. Or, well, 15 times 6 is 90, 4 times 0 is 0, so this time it's just 90. And then for the last one, my operative function is 15 times 3 plus 4 times 0. 4 times 0 is 0, 15 times 3 is 45. So for this particular question, they're asking the max and the min. So the minimum is equal to 12, right? And the maximum was equal to 98. Now, they don't give us a story problem for this particular one, but that's the basis of the problem, okay? We've got our operative function, which is the P equals, and then they gave us our constraints. Using our constraints and solving for a couple of um, slope-intercept forms, right, we were able to graph all the lines. Remember that we had our x greater than and our y greater than, and so the x and y axis were part of our boundaries, our constraints. Once we graphed all our lines, we were able to identify our feasible region. And once we could do that, we needed to find all the intersections, all the edges, the corners, the corner points of our feasible region. We had those, five of those. We plugged them into our operative function and we found our values and like I said, for this particular question, they want a maximum and a minimum. Our maximum was 98. Our minimum was 12. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. This next problem is from Unit 3, Lesson 13, page 43. And it has the same basic setup, right? Our operative function is 14x plus 10y. And here's our constraints. Now, the difference here is that our constraints don't have any axis that they are um, being blocked by, right? Our, none of the axes are, are, are part of our constraints. So this problem is probably going to look a little bit different once we get it graphed. But I'm going to label my lines 1, 2, and 3. That helps me know which line I'm working with. And when I go back to figure out some points, I know which lines to deal with. So line number one, I have x plus 5y is less than or equal to 9. Solving for my slope intercept form or my y equals form, I'm going to subtract an x from both sides. 
I get that 5y is less than or equal to negative x plus 9. Dividing every term by 5, my y is less than or equal to negative 1 fifth x, I pulled that fraction away from the variable, plus 9 fifths. Okay, not a pretty looking line, but we'll get to that in a second. For number 2, I have 5x plus 2y is less than or equal to 41. Okay, again, I want this to be in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to subtract a 5x from both sides. And I get 2y is less than or equal to negative 5x plus 41. Dividing each term by 2, I get that y is less than or equal to negative 5 halves x plus 41 halves. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And line number 3 is x plus 2y is less than or equal to 13. Subtract an x from both sides. 2y is less than or equal to negative x plus 13. Dividing every term by 2 gives me a y less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 13 halves. Now, all of these points are pretty messy. None of them is like Oh, I'm going to look exactly here and figure out this graph, right? So now I'm going to find a couple of points to help get us started. So line one, if I try to graph this right now, I'm going to be starting at nine fifths, right? What is that? One and one fifth. That's a super estimate. Um, and I kind of want to start at an actual point that actually works, right? So Let's take a look here at um, putting in a value for x that will help us get a even value for y. And what I mean by that is if I put in a value for x, it's going to make this fraction a little bit larger, right? Well, what number can I put in for x that's going to be multiplied by this 1 that will help subtract from this 9 fifths so that it is and even a number that 5 goes into evenly. Like if this number was 5, then I would have a 1, right? And that would be great. So what number can I make x to get this final answer when I add the two fractions together to be 5 over 5? Well, if I make this x a 4, okay, if x equals 4, then y is going to be less than or equal to a negative one fifth times four plus nine fifths, right? Or a negative four fifths plus nine fifths, which gives me five fifths or one. So when x is four, y is one, all right? That's where I'm going to stop with that right now. That gives me a starting point that I can come back and use my slope with and then I can graph it from there. All I need is a point because positive 9 fifths is not working for me, all right? Now, over here, same same issue, right? 41 halves, so what, 20.5? I don't want to graph that. That's not a clean point for me. Plus, it's a huge number anyway, and I don't want to deal with that. So we need to put a number in for x, that's going to pull this down a notch. Now, if I put in an even number, then these are going to cancel and I'm going to have a whole bunch of other issues back in, on my hands. So I don't want to use an even number because the two will cancel out and then I'm going to have to put it back in and that's just too much work. So I'm going to pick an odd number. The smallest one that I can think of right now is that X could equal three. This is already a negative. So using a positive number is what I want to do. So if x equals 3, then y is less than or equal to negative 5 halves times 3 plus 41 halves, right? Or it's equal to negative 15 halves, no, less than or equal to, plus 41 halves, okay, which is 26 halves, okay? Now, 26 halves is 13. Right? 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 6 three times, we got 13. So in this case, when x is 3, y is 13. 
kind of a big number, but we'll take it anyway. Number three, we're going to do the same thing because we have 13 halves over here and I don't want to deal with 13 halves. So same problem. So I have to think of a number here that I can subtract. Again, if I use an even number, they're going to cancel out. I mean, I guess you could just do it and not cancel. Um, but I want this, the final answer between these two, to be an even number. And so if I multiply this by an even number, then this, because this one's odd, my answer is always going to be odd. So if I multiply this by an odd number, then my answer should be even. So I'm going to choose 3. Since this is a 13, that would drop it down to a 10. So if x is equal to 3, then y is less than or equal to negative 1 half times 3 plus 13 over 2, right? Or negative 3 over 2 plus 13 over 2, which gives me 10 over 2, which is 5. So when x is 3, y is 5. All right, now I have enough information here to graph my lines. Oops. I'm going to have to skirt this over here like this so I have enough room to graph. All right, this number is pretty big. I know my y needs to go pretty tall, so I'm going to, let's see, start my graph looking something like this. Hopefully that's on the screen pretty good. And over here like this. All right. So this first line, remember, line number one is x plus 5y is less than or equal to 9, right? Here's a point that we found that's a concrete solid point. So we're going to get, we're going to go there first. And that is at 1, 2, 3, 4, comma 1. Okay. It's right here. Now, remember that the slope of this line is a negative 1 over 5. So I'm going to go down 1 over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is my next point. Okay. Now, I could go ahead and draw my line, but I want to try to be precise. So I'm going to actually go back 1. And when we go backwards, okay, because remember, we're, when we graph a line, we always want to go to the right. But when we go to the left, we're kind of going to take the opposite. And what that means is, since my slope is a negative one-fifth, and I would go usually go down one over five, in this case, I'm going to go up one, back five. So up one, one, two, three, four, five, backwards five, okay? And that's how we can kind of graph backwards, so to speak. And this is a solid line, because it's less than or equal to. I find it kind of interesting that all of these are less than. We're going to see how that works out for us in a minute. So we're shading underneath. This is line number one. Okay. Line number two. Okay. Remember, this was our original line. We've got our slope intercept point looking like this. And we found this concrete point. And it is at 3, 13. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, I gave myself just enough room. All right. Now, the slope is a negative 5 over 2. That tells me I'm going to go down 5 over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. Okay. Again, this is a solid line. So I will just line them up here. Okay, this is line number two, and we are shading underneath again, okay, because it's less than or equal to. And the final line over here, line number three, the point that we found, because our slope intercept point was a little messy, right? So the point that we found was three, five. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And our slope is negative 1 half. So I'm going to go down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. 
I can see where these two cross, but I have a feeling that that does not matter. Okay, this is line number three, and we would be shading underneath. All of these are less than or equal to. So underneath this line would be everything here, right? Underneath this line and underneath that line. So our feasible region is this area here, okay? Now, the only corner that we have, because remember, our axes are not part of it this time. They were not considered a constraint. So our only corner is right here where these two things meet. Now, they do not meet at a nice point. So now we need to sit down and figure out what ex where exactly do these meet, okay? It is line one and line two that meet. Where do they cross? Well, let's take a look here and see if we can figure something out. Here's line one, here's line two. We need to find their intersection point. So I'm gonna start with line one because it has an X variable with a one coefficient. And so I'm going to solve for that X. So X plus five Y is less than or equal to nine. If I get this X by itself, then I can substitute that in to line number two, all right? Which is what we need to do to find out where they cross. Now, line number three was just a waste of time because it really affects, it doesn't affect this graph or this um, linear function program at all, okay? So to solve for X, I'm gonna subtract a five Y from both sides. So X is less than or equal to negative five Y plus nine. Now I'm gonna substitute this in to line number two. And I'm just labeling them as I go so I can keep track of which step I'm on or whatever. So five times X, in this case we're substituting, so negative five Y plus nine, plus two Y is less than or equal to 41. We need to distribute fully. So five times negative five Y is negative 25 Y. 5 times 9 is 45, plus 2y less than or equal to 41. Combining our like terms, we have negative 23y's plus 45 is less than or equal to 41. Subtracting 45 from both sides, we get that negative 23y is less than or equal to a negative 4. Dividing both sides by a negative 23, tells me that y is less than or equal to, really equal to, because we're substituting and solving here, it's gonna be a positive four over 23. Now, again, just like all of our lines here, that is a number we can't really work with, right? So we need to just get a decimal approximation. So if we pull out our calculator and we take four divided by 23, we get 0.739, or sorry, 0 0.1739. And so we're gonna round that to approximately 0 0.2. I don't wanna get too crazy here, so 0 0.2 is enough. Now, we need to solve for X. We got this far, but we need to solve for X. Now, I'm not going to stick the decimal in to solve. I'm going to use the fraction, which is this four over 23 because it'll give us a more precise answer. If we already use our um, estimated value, then our answer won't be as precise as it could have been. So I'm gonna substitute that in back up here. So X is less than or equal to negative five times Y, and in this case, Y is four over 23 plus nine. So it is less than or equal to a negative 20 over 23 plus, now to, we have to have a common denominator, so we take nine times 23 and we get 207 over 23, okay? 207 minus 20 is 187 over 23. Now, I know that um, 
23 does not go into 187 evenly. And I know they don't have a factor in common because 23 is a prime factor. So we take 187 divided by 23 and we get approximately 8.13 or 8.1. This has, we took one decimal place here, so we need one decimal here. So that tells me that this point where they cross, right, that's what we were solving for, is at 8.1 comma 0 0.2. It is the only place that these cross, and it is the only um, numbers we need to put into our operative function. So 8.1 comma 0 0.2 into our operative function, oh my gosh, operative function, tells me that 14 times 8.1 plus 10 times 0 0.2 is equal to something, right? Well, what is 14 times 8.1? It's going to be 113.4. 10 times 0 0.2 is just a 2. So my answer is 115.4. Now, that is the maximum, right? There is no minimum because if you look at your graph, the shading is going to go on and on forever. Amen. Okay. There is no minimum. They didn't set us a minimum. So in this case, we just have a maximum, and that maximum is 115.4. They also tried to juke us a little bit here with this line that really does nothing um, to help us solve this problem. They just kind of stuck in an extra piece of work, I guess. Um, but again, the steps are the same, right? We took our constraints and we put them into our y-intercept or slope-intercept form. In these cases, they were a little bit messy, so we decided to solve for one solid point for each one. Okay. Once we did that, we were able to start at that solid point and then use our slope to graph our lines. We could see where they intersected, and in this case, it was only one intersection. So then we used those two lines that intersected in a substitution kind of elimination method to find our two, our x and y coordinate of this one point, and then put it into our operative function to find the value. All right, let's take a look at one more problem together. All right, so this problem is from unit three, lesson 15, page 50, problem number 31. And it is asking us again to find the minimum and maximum value for each objective function given the accompanying restraint, restraints, constraints. Oh my gosh. Um, so I have the X and Y axis are my part of my constraints this time, which is great, right? Very much limits um, where we're going here. And again, I have three equations. I'm going to label them one, two, and three. Equation one is x plus 2y is less than or equal to 14. Equation 2 is 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 33. And equation 3 is 5x plus 4y is less than or equal to 40. So just like we've been doing for the last two problems, we're now going to put these into slope-intercept form. We want to get the y by itself. So we're going to start here by subtracting x from both sides. We get 2y is less than or equal to negative x plus 14. Dividing every term by 2, we get that y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 7. For line number 2, we are going to subtract this 2x from both sides. We get 3y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 33. Dividing every term by 3. We get that y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 11. And for equation number 3, we're going to start by subtracting 5x from both sides. We get that 4y is less than or equal to negative 5x plus 40. Dividing every term by 4 gives me that y is less than or equal to negative 5 fourths x plus 10. All right. These are pretty straightforward, if not, you know, a little bit large, but that's all right. Grabbing my scratch paper here, 
we're going to go ahead and get started with the graphing. So I need to give myself a good chunk of Y space. And probably not as much X, but we'll try to make it even. All right. That's on camera. Good. So first line, I'm starting at plus seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is the Y intercept part of my slope intercept form. My slope is a negative one half downhill. So I'm going to go down one over two down one over two. Now you could keep counting and have, you know, points sitting there, but I'm gonna say that three, line, three points is enough. And I'm gonna draw my line. It's a solid line because these are all less than or equal to. And so I'm shading this way and this is line number one. Line number two starts at 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And my slope here is a negative two thirds. So I'm gonna come down two over three, down two over three, all right? Connecting these makes it look like this is an, an extraneous line that we're not gonna need again. It's line number two, it's less than or equal to, so we shade underneath. And number three starts at a positive 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. My slope here is a negative five fourths. Again, downhill. I'm gonna go down five over four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Boom, bonus that they've hit each other, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay. Looks like these two lines are going to be the only players that we're going to need right now. Okay. There's that one. This is line three. I'll label it down here. This is a bit messy up there. And it is also a less than or equal to. So I'm shading underneath. So now. We've got our three lines graphed. We need to identify our feasible region, the space where all of them would be shaded at the same time. Since this one is underneath and this one is underneath and so is this one, right? But remember, we have our X and Y as greater than, so we have to be in this quadrant. My feasible region is this area here. Okay. So what are my corner points? Well, I've got one here. And remember, that was at 0, 0,7. I've got one here at 0, 0. I don't really look at that one very often, but it's usually the minimum when they're asking for minimums. We have one over here, which is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8, 0. And then we have this one that conveniently, the two lines cross. And they cross at 1, 2, 3, 4. One, two, three, four, five. So four comma five. So we have our corner point values. They are zero comma seven, four comma five, eight comma zero, and zero comma zero. I don't know if I did that for the first problem, but zero comma zero is pretty typical uh, for your minimum, you know. So uh, my operative function is right here. So for the operative function for this one, I have 150 times x, which in this case is zero, plus 200 times y, which in this case is a seven. And that's gonna be equal to, well, 150 times zero is zero, seven times two is 14, and then two zeros, so 1,400. For here, I have my operative function of 150 times 4 plus 200 times 5. And what's that going to be equal to? Well, 200 times 5 is 1,000. And for 150s, every 250s is 300, so that's 600. So this is 1,600. For this operative function, I have 150 times 8 plus 200 times 0. 200 times zero is zero. So for every two 150s, I get 300 
there are four twos and eight. So four times 300 is 1,200. And it means use your calculator, obviously, if you need to. That is no shame in that at all. The zeros are pretty silly, but you know, zero times zero, zero, zero plus zero is zero. Okay, so the minimum, which it usually is sometimes, like the last one we did, it didn't have a minimum at all, but this case, the minimum is zero and the maximum is 1600 right because that's technically what they're asking minimum maximum i usually want to see all of their answers but the minimum minimum and maximum is sufficient so the basis of linear programming is to set up our equations in slope intercept form okay plot them Sometimes you're going to have to go an extra step and find a better point to start with than the one that they give us as our y-intercept, okay? That's what we did on the last set of problems. Once you've plotted your lines, you need to find your feasible region, which would be the part that all of them would be shaded at the, the space that all the shading overlaps, okay? And that's this area here. I just like to draw arrows which way I shade because shading and shading and shading more just gets too messy for me. I don't like the mess. Once we have our feasible region, we find our corner points, right? But remember the corner points are points basically. It's parts where lines intersect each other. Remember this y-axis is a line in our um, constraints, okay? So these this line is intersecting this line right there y-axis is our constraint so that line was intersecting this line right here those two lines intersected each other at zero zero and then we had line uh, number one and line number three intersect right here right finding your corner points you just input them into your operative function and you find in the case of this your minimum or maximum and here you can see all the ranges necessary okay i hope that helps out and better understanding linear functions. If not, please let me know. Otherwise, until next time.